Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Logically Literate. This is part four of the Raspberry Pi to Arduino communication series. In this video, we're going to be covering the Python code that we'll be using to send data to the Arduino and receive the echo back from the Arduino. If you haven't watched the previous three videos, I highly suggest that you go back and watch them in order as I cover a lot of the specifics of why I'm doing what I'm doing in those videos. But let's go ahead and jump right into the code. So as you can see, the code here is fairly simple, definitely simple in comparison to the Arduino code. At the very top, we have four imports. We're importing the random number generation system that Arduino has, or we're importing the, we're importing the random number library that Python uses. We're importing the random number library that Python has, the socket library, that way we can commu communicate over the sockets, the struct library, that way we can pack our data into a binary data set, and then the time library so we can do some sleeping and not run this a million times a second. Right after that we have the heartbeat format. As I mentioned in the last video, on Windows a short is 2 bytes. On Arduino an integer is 2 bytes. Since we're using integer in Arduino we have to use a short on Windows. So lowercase h for the struct format is going to be a signed integer in terms of Arduino. In terms of Windows, it's going to be a signed short. We have one function in this entire program that we call at the bottom with an argument of 8000. 8000 is the port number that we're going to be binding ourselves to. So first we set up our socket. You'll notice this last line here says socket underscore dgram. This right here is what allows us to uh, use UDP. Next, we bind the socket to all addresses at the port 8000 that gets passed in through here. Then we have a target IP address, which in the previous videos I mentioned is statically set via my router. And we have a target port number that is statically set in the Arduino code that we wrote in the last video. Next, we initialize a count to zero, and we create a while true loop. Inside of the while true loop, we grab a random value using rand int from zero to 100. We print out I sent, and then we give it the count and the integer, or the random integer. Then we pack it using struct. The first argument of struct.pack is the format, which is HH. And then the next N arguments have to match up with the number of characters you have in your format. So we have two characters, so we have two values, count and random value. It gets packed into data, which is a binary object. Then we use sock.send to to actually capture that data and transmit it out to this target IP address at this target port. Notice these are inside of a tuple. Then we sleep for one second and we listen on this port. We've given an argument of 1024 because that is the maximum number of bytes that we will accept at this socket um, for this specific program. Sock or sock.receive from returns the data in a binary form and then the address and then in it and both of these are in tuples, or returns this as a tuple. We've decoded into two variables here. Address itself is also a tuple that'll look a lot like this address that we used here. So the first value, first value is going to be the IP address and the second value is going to be the port. Then we use struct.unpacked to unpack the data as a binary object using the format that we've defined above into two val values. You'll notice that pack and unpacked are essentially the same thing where data and the values swap places in the function call. After that, we print that we received the, this count and received this value. We increment count and then we send the next one. So it's a very basic program in comparison to the Arduino program. You'll notice that essentially it's two lines of code to do what we did in about 10 lines of code in the Arduino program. This is largely the reason why I love to use sockets when I'm writing Python code. It's super easy to send data between two programs. Um, the programs can be on different computers or they can be on the same computer. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have a network between them that they can talk across, you can use sockets to communicate between two programs. If you want a high data rate, highly efficient data passing protocol, using sockets is one of the best methods in my opinion. Now, because we're using UDP, like I said in the first video, there are a lot of things we can't assure ourselves. But if we don't care that much about the data, then using sockets is a great approach, specifically using UDP. You can do the same setup here with TCP. I won't be showing that. 
it's a little bit more involved, slightly. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe, and leave me a comment if you have any questions or suggestions about my videos. Keep an eye out for my next video where we're going to put these two programs to the test. We'll run the Python program and see it send data to the Arduino and receive the packet back that it sent from the Arduino. But until next time, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.